Kevin, a 65-year-old man who had recently retired and felt like it was time to focus on his health. He was one of those guys who loved snacking and always seemed to have a bag of chips or pretzels nearby. Hoping to make a positive change, one of his friends had recommended these puffed bean snacks. Plant-based, full of protein and fiber, he thought this might be the perfect snack. They were delicious. And before he knew it, he'd polished off three whole bags. He felt a bit bloated, but nothing out of the ordinary. The next day, Kevin felt almost hungover. He felt exhausted, had a headache, and was nauseated. Maybe it was all the salt? But something was different. He had this vague pain in the right side of his abdomen. But despite chugging lots of water, the pain and nausea just kept getting worse, and his appetite was completely gone. By the next morning, he felt awful. His skin was crawling like he had a fever. And when he finally mustered the energy to stand up, he almost blacked out. Stumbling into the bathroom, Kevin noticed that his urine was a dark brown. And when he looked in the mirror, he started to panic. Staring back at him was a pale, ghostly version of himself, and the whites of his eyes had turned yellow. His heart was racing, so he called his neighbor, who drove him to the nearest emergency department. So the first thing that'll happen when you arrive in the emergency department is you'll see a triage nurse. They take a quick history, do your vitals, and then decide how quickly you need to be seen. So we've got a fever, right upper quadrant pain, and jaundice. This is a triad of symptoms that you can never ignore. It's called Charcot's triad, and we have to consider a serious infection of the bile ducts called acute cholangitis. Overall, Kevin's presentation is concerning for sepsis, which is a life-threatening reaction to an infection. So the first thing to do is stabilize our patient with IV fluids and powerful broad-spectrum antibiotics. This is the key to emergency medicine. You wanna stabilize your patient and then consider the most serious life-threatening conditions first. Kevin then had an urgent abdominal ultrasound and the results were actually reassuring. His bile ducts looked normal and his blood work wasn't consistent with acute cholangitis. So we can rule that out and continue looking for the real underlying cause. Okay, now let's review Kevin's initial blood work. A few things jump out at me right away. His hemoglobin is low, so he's anemic, and his LDH is very high. This is a protein that's released when tissues are damaged and cells are breaking down. Finally, his total bilirubin is extremely high. This explains the yellowing of his eyes because bilirubin is a yellow pigment that forms when hemoglobin inside red blood cells is broken down. But there's a second test here called the direct bilirubin, which tells us how much of the total bilirubin has been processed by the liver. This number is very low in comparison. And this is where our case takes a really interesting turn. So putting all these findings together, it tells a story like this. Kevin's red blood cells are bursting, releasing LDH and hemoglobin into the bloodstream. That free hemoglobin gets mobbed up and converted into massive amounts of bilirubin. But there's so much bilirubin in the blood that it overwhelms the liver's ability to process it and remove it from the body. So bilirubin builds up in the bloodstream, leading to yellowing of the eyes and skin called jaundice. And that is called acute hemolysis which is Greek for blood breaking apart. So now we know what's happening, but we still need to figure out the underlying cause. Here's how I think about hemolysis. First, I consider external factors that can destroy your red blood cells. That can range from an attack from your immune system to a malfunctioning heart valve. Then I think about internal factors that make your red blood cells weaker and more susceptible to breaking apart something like sickle cell disease. Tests were sent off to assess for these conditions, but they take time to come back, and Kevin's condition was getting worse. His hemoglobin continued to drop, and he required a blood transfusion. Then repeat blood work showed some more bad news. Despite receiving IV fluids, his kidney function was getting worse. That's because the free hemoglobin released by the red blood cells is extremely toxic to the kidneys. And when it passes through into the urine, it leads to a dark brown color. And the only way to save his kidneys is by figuring out the underlying cause of the hemolysis. So let's go back to our differential diagnosis. The Coombs test came back negative. He had normal platelets and coagulation testing, and the ultrasound showed a normal spleen. The team also confirmed that he hadn't traveled or had any contact with animals, no snake or insect bites, and no new medications so we can cross those off as well. It turned out it was Kevin's blood smear that had the most interesting results. Let's take a look. See these red cells that look like something's taken a bite out of them? 
we actually call these bite cells and blister cells. And by using a special stain, we can figure out exactly what happened. Notice how these cells have a small dark spot in them? These are called Heinz bodies, and they're tiny clumps of damaged hemoglobin that stick to the cell membrane. As these cells pass through the spleen, macrophages take a look and think, hmm, that looks tasty and literally take a bite out of the red blood cell, which leads to the formation of bite cells and blister cells. So now we know we're dealing with a problem with Kevin's hemoglobin, and that points us towards a genetic cause. Although given Kevin's age, that seems a bit unusual. So Kevin's doctor went back and took a detailed family history. It turned out Kevin's maternal grandfather had episodes of jaundice and anemia throughout his life, but he never got a diagnosis. Then his doctor followed up with an oddly specific question. Had he been eating fava beans recently? Kevin dug into his bag and pulled out the bean snacks. And sure enough, they were fava beans. So putting it all together, this is almost certainly G6PD deficiency. So what is G6PD? And no, it's not a Star Wars robot. It's a really important protective enzyme in your cells. You see, oxygen is both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, it's pretty useful if you want to stay alive, but it also causes oxidative stress, which can damage your cells. So your cells had to come up with a way to protect themselves. I like to think of a sci-fi analogy where the lasers are oxidative stress and the shields are antioxidants. All of your cells contain G6PD which is an enzyme that helps to produce an antioxidant shield called GSH. The more G6PD you have, the stronger your shield, and the more quickly that shield can regenerate. On the other hand, if you're really deficient, that shield can get knocked out easily, leaving your red blood cells vulnerable. But what the heck does this have to do with beans? Well, fava beans in particular can get broken down by bacteria in your gut to form chemicals that can cause oxidative stress. And that kicks off the destruction of red blood cells in people with G6PD deficiency. And the reason that it particularly targets red blood cells is because they have a unique dependence on G6PD, whereas other cells have backup mechanisms to deal with oxidative stress. And believe it or not, G6PD deficiency is actually pretty common. It affects over 400 million people worldwide and around 2% of all Americans. And it's particularly common in people originating from areas of the world that have been ravaged by malaria. You see, malaria is a parasite that needs to infiltrate your red blood cells in order to reproduce. In normal red blood cells, they can hide away, replicate in secret, and shield themselves from all the stresses of the outside world. But in G6PD deficient cells, the extra stress from containing a parasite causes damage to the membrane, and that allows the body to identify and eliminate those infected cells before things get out of hand. So if you're deficient, you can still get malaria, but you're more likely to survive. Which may explain why the genes for G6PD deficiency have been passed down for generations in areas where malaria is common. But you might be wondering, if this is a genetic condition, how was Kevin able to live for 65 years completely unaware of it? That's because there's a whole spectrum of G6PD deficiency. In the most severe cases, people have chronic hemolysis, meaning their red blood cells are constantly breaking down because they can't even handle the normal oxidative stress that we all experience from day to day. In comparison, Kevin had a much more mild form, where he literally had to binge on fava beans to have a major episode of hemolysis. So now we can explain everything that happened. Kevin was living with undiagnosed G6PD deficiency his whole life. Maybe he had some mild episodes in the past, but it was never bad enough to seek medical attention. After eating bag after bag of fava beans, his red blood cells started to burst. Hemoglobin spilled out of his cells, mopping up nitrous oxide, which caused smooth muscles in his gut to constrict, leading to abdominal pain and nausea. This also ramped up inflammation in his system, and his body responded with a fever, even though there was no infection. Next, when he stood up, he was lightheaded. This is a common symptom of anemia, because you're not able to get enough oxygen to your brain. Then huge amounts of hemoglobin were turned into bilirubin, which turned his eyes yellow, and free hemoglobin ended up in his urine, giving it a brown color, and ultimately causing kidney damage. In the end, after a few days on IV fluids, the oxidants from the fava beans cleared his system. Kevin's red blood cells stopped bursting, his urine cleared up, 
and his kidneys made a full recovery. His liver was finally able to catch up on processing that bilirubin, and his color returned to normal. From then on, Kevin was vigilant about avoiding any triggers like fava beans or certain types of antibiotics. After hearing all of this, you might be thinking to yourself, why would anyone eat fava beans and expose themselves to that kind of oxidative stress? Well, the concept of oxidative stress isn't so cut and dry. For instance, Physical exercise causes oxidative stress, but it's undeniably healthy. Some researchers even think that small pulses of oxidation can help maintain or even strengthen your body's natural defenses against oxidative stress. So when it comes to fava beans, if you have normal G6PD, I'd say enjoy them in moderation, like anything else. I actually love these bean snacks and no, it's not a sponsorship. So if you enjoy medical mysteries, I've got a whole playlist full of them that'll keep you guessing and test your diagnostic skills. As always, stay curious, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. So bye for now.